चेक ऑफ दी फास्ट In these sessions, we are going to discuss about this asynotic and synotic congenital heart disease, and how you should proceed, and how are the different picture you can you can look uh, through this echo uh, that uh, will be discussed by the uh, Dr. Monesh Kumar, ma'am, please. Okay. In continuation with the sequential analysis, uh, we have discussed AV concordance connection. How to define the right atrial, left atrial, right ventricle, left ventricle. Uh, just continuing here we are seeing the patient of situs solitus with av discordance so by seeing this view you cannot use the term corrected tj or the ltj definitely you have to ask about the situs i know it is left atria it is right atria and here you will look at the offsetting look at the offsetting this valve is more apically placed it has attachment to the uh, ventricular septum okay this is very smooth this is comparatively rough so here the information from this four chamber view you are getting is the av discordance outflow we have to define whether it is va discordance also leading to correct transposition in the correct in the av discordance condi condition left sided valve means which is tricuspid valve now usually is dysplastic which is in 90% of the cases in the series autopsy series functionally abnormal around 50 to 60% so here you are seeing the tr of tricuspid regurgitation which is now left sided place so it is a uh, echo of the corrected uh, av discordance here av connections which you are seeing is the both av valves are connected to the one ventricle which is morphological left ventricle so uh, double inlet here we call it as a double inlet left ventricle we have seen av concordance we have seen av discordance now it is a single ventricle physiology means double inlet to the one chamber which is morphological left ventricle lv we have to define by the same criteria means smooth uh, chamber it is posterior located whatever the concordant discordant connection lv has to be posterior it does not come anteriorly so and uh, plus a smooth wall surface okay so we have to define lv by that and both av valves are committed to one chamber leading to double inlet to the morphological left ventricle sorry here what you are seeing is the here aorta is on the right side so by this it has to be situs inversus this is one atria another atria av valves are this component is atriatic only one patent so basically its connection is going to the uh, one ventricle morphological single ventricle so here is the uh, common inlet with atriatic right component which is committed to the one ventricle again it's a single ventricle physiology here your right sided valve which is tricuspid is atriatic and this is the mitral valve joining the left ventricle so av concordant but atriatic one component here univentricular av connection is because of the atriatic one component here you are seeing the mitral atresia left sided av valve is atriatic this is right ventricle left ventricle was hypoplastic not seen here and la is dilated from this view the most important information i am getting is the this valve is atriatic obviously single ventricle but it is usually dilated septum is going towards the la means atrial communication is restrictive means this child if we go for the intervention will require septectomy or the balloon atrial septostomy because la pressures are very high septum is just going towards the right ventricle so from this four chamber view i am getting the information single ventricular physiology with restrictive interatrial communication la is dilated pulmonary veins are too prominent because of the pulmonary venous hypertension here 
in this four chamber view the information i am getting is the av concordant but this valve is a test this is interventricular septum this is a left ventricle morphological it is a smooth this is right ventricle this av valve which is tricuspid is attached to the towards the left side of the interventricular septum there is large inlet vst and it is attached means straddling grade 1 to 2 is occurring here okay straddling grade 2 is if it is more than 1 cm uh, uh, it is attached at the septip it is straddling grade 1 then within 1 cm then if it attached to the opposite side it will be the grade 3 straddling grade 3 straddling means it is going to the single ventricle physiology here we can detach it and close the septum like this so patient will go for the two ventricle uh, correction so large vsd with straddling we have to identify straddling and overriding overriding means commitment of particular valve whether it is semi lunar or the uh, av valve to the over the septum to uh, other ventricle so if we look from the overriding point of view this is ventricular septal plane this is atrial septal plane so there is override also because this plane will go here and it is towards the left so there is overriding 25% grade 1 straddling but patient will go for the two ventricle repair so these connections are very important concordant discordant are important univentricular single ventricle unbalanced are important plus this overriding straddling what is the cause of um, unbalanced connection we have to identify while doing while looking at the echo here uh, like we know tricuspid straddling best seen in the posterior plane means in the four chamber view because tricuspid valve is the posterior valve for the mitral valve straddling mitral valve usually straddle from in the we get from the outflow view so this is mitral valve straddling this is the ventricular septum and it is going towards the right and attached on the opposite side of the ventricular septum on the rv side this child underwent fontan operation finally so it is leading to the single ventricular physiology because it is too far to be to bring to the left side of the ventricle uh from the the concordant uh, this is this was the av connection then to the outflow sequential analysis VA concordant we have seen means aorta rising from the LV pulmonary artery from the RV so concordant connection we have seen here is the discordant connection this is right ventricle you can identify by this rough surface this is left ventricle and this is the aorta this is the aorta just going above and uh, we are not seeing any bifurcation this is the coronary artery rising from the aorta so aorta is arising from the right ventricle here same child you will see this is great vessel semi lunar valve you are seeing which is bifurcating so at this level you cannot see it is aorta or pa but if you follow the artery the great vessel you will see it is bifurcating and this red flow coming to the pa is the patent atrus arteriosus so this is a child with the transposition of great vessels with intact ventricular septum a small pta and transposition of great vessels is means a, you have to say you have to go from the situs av con, situs solitus av concordance va discordance and then relation of the great vessels here is the double outlet right ventricle uh, this is left ventricle this is right ventricle this is aorta and it is more than 80% committed to the right ventricle only outflow from the lv is this vsd so this vsd is very important size of this vsd is very important to the aorta because this has to root in this way this is will be the only lv outflow may need enlargement if it is smaller okay so lv aorta we have to close in this way intracardiac routing which we call okay and the pulmonary arteries are this so pulmonary artery is 100% committed to rv while the aorta is 80% committed to rv so this is a case of double outlet right ventricle aortic valve attachment here mitral valve here so you are getting the mitral aortic discontinuity commitment of aorta but it is a correctable lesion you do not require any uh, conduit or something vsd so can be routed to the aorta pulmonary artery already committed to the rv normal related great vessels so child underwent surgery like a vsd here again do rv this is the aorta this is mitral valve aortic valve and this this is severe pulmonary stenosis pulmonary arteries are were committed to the were posteriorly and pulmonary stenosis because of the malalignment interventricular septum again a case of the dorv with the single ventricle this is aorta this is pulmonary artery both av both semilunar valves at the same level in dorv the important thing is the both bilateral infundibulum means infundibulum normally there is 
infundibulum below the pulmonary artery means RV has the infundibulum and not on the RV side. When it is double outlet right ventricle means both great vessel will have infundibulum, subaortic infundibulum, subpulmonary infundibulum. So because of these infundibulum, both great vessels will be both semilunar valve will be at the same level. Sorry. So this is aortic valve, this is pulmonary valve. Normally aorta is at the level, lower level and pulmonary is at the higher level. Here we are getting both semilunar valve at the same level. Then we have to look for the aortic stenosis or the pulmonary stenosis. Here this is the double outlet left ventricle which is very rare anomaly. What we are seeing? Very small chamber here which is hypoplastic right ventricle. Left ventricle main chamber is this. and both great vessels, one semilunar valve is this one, which is aorta, which is pulmonary artery, we do not know in this view, but we are seeing two semilunar valve, there is no infundibulum, it is not neither below the aorta, neither below the pulmonary artery, which is a feature of the double outlet left ventricle, because LV does not have infundibulum. So double outlet left ventricle usually do not have any infundibulum, both great vessels at the same level again, but here because infundibulum is not there. In DORV at the same level because there is bilateral infundibulum, both are higher and at the same level. Here both are lower at the same level because there is absence of infundibulum below the both great vessels. Then is the single outlet, large VST, pulmonary atresia. This is the pulmonary atresia, blind pouch. And this is the truncus arteriosus, means single outlet. This is truncal valve, this is VST, left ventricle and aorta is going this way and pulmonary artery rising from uh, this going this way. So this is the truncus arteriosus. So in sequential analysis we have seen the concordant connection, discordant connection, double discordance means AVBA discordance, we have seen univentricular AV connections, we have seen outflow with discordance, double outlet and the single outlet and the truncus arteriosus. So at all level all connections abnormality we have seen. For the shunt lesions means ASD, VSD, PG, aortopulmonary window, atrioventricular septal defects. So these are the uh, shunt lesions where ECHO give most of the information. The cath only required when there is question of the operability for the hemodynamic assessment. So whatever decision, main decision we have to take, we go by the echocardiography. If it is plus minus operability, we go by the, we add cath, but your anatomy is by the echo only which most most of the information by the echocardiography we used to get. By the, we can see the shunt at the level of atrial septum, whether it is ASD fossa ovalis, it is ostium primum, it is sinus venosus, SVC or IVC type or the coronary sinus type. So what type of defect we, have, we will be able to define by the echocardiography and uh, then the direction of shunt and the PA pressure are the rest issues. Then at the ventricle level, type of defect, size of defect, what is the hemodynamic issue, AV canal defect, again type of uh, AV canal defect, operability or not, very associated rigors or not, PDA, size of PDA and uh, where it is connecting to the pulmonary artery. So these all things we get from the echocardiography only. In addition, we get hemodynamics. While on the obstructive lesion, we will see by echo only we can define it as RV outflow obstruction or the LV outflow, what is the severity of obstruction, what is the uh, type of um, valve calcified or not, then the subvalvar, valvar or the supravalvar. So everything we can get from the echocardiography and the associated lesion obviously we can define. These are the echo picture of all type of the ASDs. This is the fossa ovalis ASD. This is subcostal sagittal view and defect is there. This is left atrium, this is right atrium, this is pulmonary artery, this is SVC. The thing in this, in ASD patient we have to see is whether patient can go for the device closer or will require surgery. Surgery obviously can be done for the any type of defect, but device closer for the fossa well is ASD only and we need a central defect there. So the problem here is that our SVC rim is very small. So not a good candidate for the device closer. ASD is biggish. But biggish is not the issue, our issue is this SVC rim. So we have to define the rims, means supporting structure from all views for whenever we are designing whether we can go for the device closer or the surgical closer. So for well is ASD, it is very important to define the rims, size of the ASD, direction of the shunt, PA pressure, effect of the ASD on the heart. So we have to take the information in totality uh, whenever dealing with the for well is ASD. For the uh, coronary sinus ASD, Coronary sinus ASD means unroofing of the coronary sinus. So whole of the blood of the coronary sinus directly drained to the left atrium leading to the feature of ASD and the sinuses. So ASD will be seen in the lowermost part of the atrial septum and no coronary sinus here. 
So coronary sinus, they are left SVC to left atrium, and this is the level of the atrial shunt. Then the sinus venosa CSD, SVC type. SVC type means SVC. This is SVC which used to override the defect. So the central part will be intact, means fossa valis area will be intact. You will get evidence of the RARV dilatation, means volume overload of the right sided chambers. Plus, you have to look whenever you are getting these things, means RARV dilated. You should look for the ASD. If fossa valis area is intact, you should do a subcostal sagittal view to look for the SVC for the ASD. Means you have to rule out sinus venosus ASD, whether SVC or the IVC type. IVC means IVC is committed to the, mm, is overriding the defect. In addition, both these defect have anomalous venous drainage of the pulmonary vein. Right upper pulmonary vein with the sinus venosus SVC type ASD, right lower with the IVC type of the ASD. So pulmonary vein anomalous drainage is usual feature of this type of defect. But definitely you have to look for the, it is very common for us to get a child with sinus venosus ASD with report carrying dilated RARV primary pulmonary hypertension intact atrial septum. It is very common to get this report. So before labeling intact atrial septum, we have to rule out sinus venosus ASD. These are the echo picture of the complete AV canal defect. You can see ASD, VSD and the common AV valve. This is the common AV valve, which is usually very beautifully defined from the subcostal. This is the coronal view. This is, this is the coronal view. This is the sagittal view. So this is complete AV canal defect and balance connection. I mean left sided component is connected to LV, right sided to the RV and uh, child will go undergo total correction. This is the different type of the VSDs. This is perimembranous VSD. Here it is the tricuspid valve which is coming into the ventricular uh, septal defect and VSD is getting slightly smaller by this septal leaflet. Otherwise VSD is this big very large VSD getting slightly smaller by the septal leaflet of tricuspid valve. This is aorta, this is LV, this is LA. So our usual parastron log axis view and there is ventricular septal defect. Okay. This is the very important to define this VSD. Here it is usual perimembranous VSD as this one. But if you look carefully, this part ventricular septum, uh, infundibular septum is posteriorly directing. In this condition, it is very high chances to have arch interruption of the coarctation of aorta because during the fetal life with this posterior malalignment, LV outflow decreases and we chances of having coarctation of interruption are very high. So whenever you see posterior malalignment of interventricular septum, means practically it is subaortic stenosis, chances of coarct and interruption are there. Usually presentation is in the newborn period because by this posterior malalignment your left to right shunt increases, huge left to right shunt and very early presentation. This is subcostal paracoronal view. Here what you are seeing, this is tricuspid valve, this is RV, this is right ventricle, this is aorta in short axis. This hole is a large VST, large VST, dilated pulmonary arteries and um, usual perimembranous VST extending to the outlay septum. Here. Again, this inform this VSD defining is very important. It is the usual parasternal long axis view, LA, LV, aorta, aortic valve. If you put color here, you will get a turbulent jet restrictive flow. LV is not dilated, but the important thing here is this prolapse. It is very important to label this prolapse because child will have aortic regurgitation which will progress if you leave him on follow up and ultimately he will end up with aortic valve replacement. So identify early stages of aortic valve prolapse is very important. Quantity wise VSD will be smaller but it is at the risk of aortic valve damage. You have to define this aortic valve prolapse, you have to label it and close follow up if there is no AR, no AR. if AR develop early surgery will require. We cannot advice follow up with VSD getting restricted by the aortic valve prolapse. Then defining these echoes, anatomy, we have to look for the hemodynamics, means PA pressure should be assessed, quantum of shunt by the chamber size should be assessed when you're defining a shunt lesion. Then after this shunt lesion come the uh, cyanotic heart disease, where tetralogy is the commonest type of cyanotic heart disease, tetralogy physiology, means you have VSD PS physiology. It will have tetralogy of phalot, double outer right ventricle with VSDPS, 
then TGA with VSDPS, AB canal defect with pulmonary stenosis, single ventricle physiology with pulmonary stenosis. So all these with pulmonary stenosis will come into top physiology. You have to look for the degree of pulmonary stenosis, pulmonary artery size, coronaries, collateral, PDA, source of pulmonary blood flow. You have to look on that. All these things can be defined by the echocardiography. Cath only require for the whenever images are not good, we go for the cardiac catheterization or coiling of the collateral in case of the uh, collaterals. While with single ventricle physiology, we require cardiac catheterization only for the PA pressure and the pulmonary vascular resistance and the LV filling, ventricular filling pressure. So not for defining the anatomy, it is mainly for the hemodynamic assessment where we require the cardiac cath in single ventricle or by the, for the intervention like coiling of the collaterals. Admixture lesions are the lesions where is the mixing of the cyanotic and the acyanotic um, oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood is occurring there with increased pulmonary blood flow. It is with the top physiology, we have PS physiology means PA pressures are normal, pulmonary blood flow is decreased. Here pulmonary blood flow is increased with or without high pulmonary arterial pressure. So this group include transposition of great vessels, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection, truncus arteriosus, single ventricle without pulmonary stenosis come into this group. For the TGA, I showed you the echocardiography or the transposition of great vessels. We have to define by the concordant discordant connections. Site of mixing, ASD, what is the size of ASD or the PFO, whether it is laminar or restrictive, VSD is there or not, PDA is there or not. These, one of the mixing site has to be there for the survival of the kit if it is coming to us. So we have to define, usually the presentation with transposition of great vessels is by third, fourth day of life as PTA get restricted, ventricular septum is intact. So get very blue and child come to our attention. Here PFO is smaller, we have to do the septosomy, otherwise early switch by 7 to 10 days of life. So complete diagnosis must, then associated lesion we should rule out. Coronary anatomy is important because child is going for the arterial switch, means coronary transformation will transfer will be required. And left ventricle, how it is, it is prepared or not. Prepared means in first month of the life, LV is prepared. After that, it used to regress as pulmonary arteries are facing the pulmonary, uh, LV is facing the pulmonary circulation. This is again same picture, a pulmonary artery arising from the LV, bifurcating, PDA filling the pulmonary artery and this is aorta, very small VST is here, this red flow. This is parasternal long axis view for the transposition of great vessels. What you see in subcostal view, very important is this parallel great vessels. This is aorta, this is pulmonary artery, it is bifurcating. So parallel running great vessels are a feature of malpose great vessels. Here you are seeing the ventricular septal defect, tricuspid valve coming into way of the VSD. So parallel great vessels. And this is in parasternal long axis view. This is ventricular septal defect, pulmonary arteries. Here pulmonary arteries override the defect. While with normally related great vessels, aorta is the okay. structure which override the defect. So VSD, pulmonary artery pulmonary artery and which is turning posteriorly. Normally aorta goes in this plane, just straight, while with TGA pulmonary artery tilt posteriorly and this is the aortic valve which is anterior and just descent downward. This is echocardiography of a child with mesocardia. You can see how the heart is sitting uh, just, just in, uh, in the center plane. So this is mesocardia with, uh, with large ASD and inside the child has truncus arteriosus. This is LV, truncus, pulmonary artery arising from the that uh, common trunk. Okay, then come to the pulmonary uh, outflow tract obstruction. With the outflow tract obstruction, we have to define whether it is at for the left or left or right, whatever the site of obstruction, we have to look whether it is subvalvar, valvar or the supravalvar or into the distal vessel like peripheral PS or the coarctation of the aorta. So site of obstruction we have to define, severity of obstruction we have to define and what is the effect of this obstruction on the left on the ventricle whether hypertrophied or dysfunction we have to define. Okay, plus associated anomaly obviously we have to look. So the most important for the pulmonary stenosis is the how is the valve. It is thin displ or dysplastic, what is the size of the annulus, pulmonary annulus and the severity of obstruction. Subvalvar obstruction with valvar PS is usually there because of hypertrophy, but it used to regress 
in the three to six month period of time. But muscle uh, bridge, we should rule out. If it is there, it is a organic obstruction will require surgery. On the aortic side, again, great. Uh, you have to look for the valve morphology. Associated AR is there or not? Valve is bicuspid, tricuspid, or the quadricuspid. You can have any number of the cusp in uh, aortic valve. So these things should be ruled out. Significant AR should be ruled out. Calcified valve should be ruled out. Then you can go for the balloon aortic valvotomy. And uh, associated things, if there, will require aortic valve replacement. And again, the important thing, very important thing with the LV or the RV side is whenever there is significant ventricular dysfunction, gradients are not reliable because we have dysfunction our accordingly output will be low. So we will not get proper gradient. We will underestimate gradient. So we go by the total picture of the valve, valve area, stenotic valve area uh, to define the um, severity of obstruction. Then the coarctation of aorta. In pediatric age group, it is very easy to define the coarctation of aorta by echocardiography. You have to look for the arch in the uh, suprasternal long axis view, arch vessels, uh, transverse arch is hypoplastic or not. We can go for the balloon dilatation or not. It depends on the hypoplasia of the uh, yeah. uh, transverse arch. Then associated PDA is there or not, aneurysm is there or not. How, how is the LV function? What is the gradient and the these things should be uh, can be looked by the echocardiography. This is the suprasternal long axis view. This is the second arch branch, third arch branch. First arch branch has uh, uh, is here, and this is the discrete shelf. Very good for the balloon dilatation. And the gradient in the arch, uh, if it is significant, it has to be continuous gradient signal, because in the uh, great vessel we have the systolic and diastolic pressures. In ventricle outflow, semilunar valve, we get only the systolic gradient, while with the great vessel, we get the continuous gradient because flow is there from systole to diastole. If it is significant, we get a continuous signal, whether it is pulmonary stenosis, peripheral branch PA stenosis or the coarctation of aorta, same thing applies there. The signal start in the diastole and split, spill into the system, uh, start in systole and spill into the diastole. So this is very important. If there is signal only in systole, it will be of uh, uh, means you may get higher signal, but if it is not into the going to the diastole, means something is wrong there. And usually these they present with the high PA pressure, uh, secondary to uh, LV outflow obstruction. Then from the intervention uh, point of view, we have to look on the ASD. Like uh, a, this is fossa valley CSD, but there is no IV serum. So a child cannot go under device closure. So these are the small things which we should look while doing echo for the congenital heart defect and different different views. Basic and not make a, a description. We can stop here. We have to. The important thing is this: we should know what uh, uh, we are like in the congenital heart disease. We should know. We should follow a systematic approach, sequential approach. Whatever the lesion, whether whether it is simple ASD or VSD or PD or it is a complex heart disease, if you go sequentially, you can diagnose any complex problem, or you can assess hemodynamic uh, of that uh, particular heart defect. But if you just jump from one view to other view, or just define a particular lesion and just leave it, so your report yeah, obviously will not because in case of adult it is most of the thing it yeah. is the confined structure yeah but in case of pediatric and congenital heart disease it is uh, like possibilities is uh, like endless yeah. so really uh, we need to go by this systematic. like systematic approach mm -hmm. and if you don't follow and if you don't uh, develop the habit of systematic approach definitely probability of uh, missing, missing the things, missing the things will be more and moreover as ma'am uh, said earlier also like uh, you have to identify this structure like uh, because in many disease some structure this looks like other disease other structure so like uh, left atrial it has to be like uh, identified by the appendages like this there are the various things by which you have to identify it. and not only don't identify it by only seeing the one particular uh, view you have to make uh, like see by the other structure other view also and make it confirmed that yeah this is the really a mitral bulb or tricuspid bulb or it is this is the really a single uh, like a ventricle or double ventricle otherwise in case of adult it is very easy we all know that there Even are two ventricles uh, like uh, it's uh, uh, like corrected tj avva concordance yeah, yeah. Uh, no separate defect they come with chest pain in adult stage and uh, 
they used to diagnose uh, sir, TR will be there. TR is very common to occur in the corrected TGA, and yeah. just MR, rheumatic heart disease, uh, they they being followed by that. So that in it, even you are doing the adult echo, connections should be yeah, there. Yeah. Always connection should be because uh, it, it is uh, like ASD can present in this age group. Uh, corrected TGA, which is the commonest thing, most complex and uh, co can present in adult age, which is asymptomatic or chest pain or arrhythmia, complete heart block. Any patient with presenting with a complete heart block, corrected transposition of great vessels should be ruled out. Epstein anomaly, mild Epstein anomaly, arrhythmia is a common association. So Epstein anomaly has to be ruled out. Whenever you came, but again, your comes as your concord uh, yeah, sequential analysis. Sequential, because these are the most important mm -hmm. thing. So as a uh, conclusion, I would like to say that uh, there are different view which you need to know, uh, like in the case of uh, pediatric cardio uh, echocardiography, like uh, subcostal is the best, and after that you go by the apical view. You can go by the like long parasternal view, short parasternal view, suprasternal view, and moreover there are sequential analysis and there are many fixed structure by which we identify the structure, and after that definitely you identify gradually like approach like different like. Uh, asynotic uh, heart disease, synotic heart disease, or any obstructive lesion like uh, aortic stenosis or pulmonary stenosis. And I hope all of you will be benefited by this uh, program.